your flashes, you can see here that I found the whole of what looks like a rather large sand snake. So what we'll be doing is setting up all our remote gear around the hole and hopefully getting a shot of the snake as it leaves this layer without any risk to ourselves. I've got one of my assistants here today to help me set everything up. The 580 works by having the pocket wizard attached to your remote camera receive on one channel but then transmit on one channel higher once the camera sends it a sync pulse. You don't have to do anything special to turn relay mode on. It's turned on automatically as soon as the pocket wizard detects that it's in a camera's hot shoe and connected with a motor drive cable at the same time. How did I get in my office? While we're here, let's talk about why relay mode uses two channels instead of just one. I've got a camera and a flash set up right now, so let's take a look. Both the radio on my camera and the one attached to my flash are set to channel 1. When I trigger them, oh, the flash fired before my camera did. Now let's look at that in slow motion. They don't synchronize when they're on the same channel because an SLR camera takes some time between when it's triggered until its shutter is fully open. I'm going back to the beach. Now that my gear is all set up, let's talk about how I did it. Here's what our remote camera setup looks like. We've got a plus two mounted in the hot shoe of our 40D, a CMN3P cable that goes from the camera port on the radio to the remote port on the body. Now you can see here that the plus two is set to channel one and the transmit mode is set to both. That's important for the setup we're doing. Here's our remote flash. I don't recommend dangling your plus two from your flash like you can see I'm doing today. The important thing with this radio is that it's set to receive on channel two. As I mentioned with relay mode, the plus two attached to your remote camera receives on one channel and then transmits on one channel higher than that to trigger your remote flashes. So channel one for our camera, channel two for our flash. To trigger this, all we need to do is set the transmitting radio in our hand to the same channel as the receiving radio attached to our remote camera. So I'll set my Multimax to channel one and then just press the test button. Looks good. I left to grab a drink just to come back and find that someone or something has filled in the fan snake hole. So much for that idea. Did you know that you can trigger your camera wirelessly with pocket wizards? You probably do if you watch my show, but there may be more to it than you think. What's this? A Rebel T1i. More importantly, what's under this rubber thing here? I call it a remote camera port. Canon calls it a remote camera terminal. But what really matters is this is where you plug a cable in when you want to trigger your camera wirelessly. Here's a 7D. Notice how it has a very different remote camera port than the Rebel. Okay, say you're shooting with Flex TT5. What cable do you use? Different cameras have different remote ports. We make three different kinds of cables for each one of those remote ports. How do you choose? Well, I talked about this a little bit in a previous episode. Watch it, it's really good. But uh, let's get into it in a bit more detail. The first step in finding the right cable for you is identifying the gear you already have. I have a T1i, as you know, but now what? Check this out. The cable finder. The cable finder will find the right cables for your equipment. It'll give you every option you have, which for most cameras will be three different kinds of cables. To keep things simple, I'm just going to talk about how these cables work with the Flex TT5 today. If you've used our cable